Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to show you two really interesting tools that you can find very handy in fixing your car, and they're not expensive at all. Now I know people say scan tools, scan tools, there's so many of them, what do I do well? This is a Launch Elite Toyota. You can see it right there, right? I got it for like $101 on eBay. They go anywhere between $100 and $129, right? Now, it's only for Toyotas and Lexuses. A lot of people own Toyotas and Lexuses. Yes, I have a $5,000 scan tool that does them all, right? This thing is 100 bucks, that's five grand. This does an awful lot of things. You'll see when I hook it up to this Toyota, it does 280 something different parameters. That's a lot of information for a scan tool in this price. Same as any scan tool, you just find the data part, make sure it's pointed in the right direction, Plug it in. Immediately turns itself on, but for better communication, you want to stick the key in. Turn it on so the idiot lights are on. Doesn't even have a battery. That's one reason they can sell it cheaper. It's running off the 12 volts in your car. When you unplug it, it turns itself off, but who cares? You got a battery in your car, right? This is only for Toyotas, but the company makes them for GM, Ford, BMW, Audi. They make decent scan tools for each one vehicle. Let's face the facts. I'm a mechanic. I like my $5,000 scan tool. It's fast. It does all the different cars, right? Has a tremendous memory because it's huge. Well, are you going to buy that? No, but this thing, it costs 100 bucks. And when you see what it does, you probably think, hey, maybe I'll try one of those. It's all the usual stuff. Look at the diagnostics. Low price unit, does auto detect. It's going to do a VIN scan. It read the VIN, knows what it is. 2017 Toyota Tacoma. Searching the VIN to get information. And one thing I really like about it is it updates itself automatically. Now, they say, you know, free updates forever. I don't know. People say that, and then years later, it's not free anymore. But as it stands now, it came in the box, he hooked it up to the internet, and even though I'm 100 feet away, it still works and it's just finished updating it for the latest update. Tacoma gasoline, 2017, 37,000 kilometers, okay. You'll notice it's relatively slow at getting things done. It's doing the health report now, and you can see, it's going relatively slowly. Sure, my $5,000 scan tool is a lot faster, but I mean, if you're talking about $4,900 difference, this gets the information. It's just slower at getting it. And as you can see, look at all the different systems it's going through. It's going through a lot of systems. Still going. It's almost there. And the health report, of course, it didn't find everything's normal because it's a Toyota Tacoma with low mileage. So now we'll go to a really interesting part. We'll go to the engine and mechanical system. And while it's setting up, we'll start her up. And we're going to look at data stream. If you look at the bottom here. There's an interesting thing. See how that says 07285? That means that the seven data stream on the screen are seven out of two 285 bits of data stream you can get with this hundred dollar scanner that is a lot of information now i do have to admit collect them all here they're all selected okay and it gives you the information the problem is it's gonna take a while to go from screen to screen because it's a small unit with a slower chip it's only a hundred bucks the chip in my machine probably costs five times that just for the chip now here's the information but now watch when, when you get past these first 24 it's got to load itself and it's relatively slow a regular mechanic would say oh that just takes too long i can't stand it we'll do it again now that one was faster but see, still, it takes a while to reload. Most mechanics, myself included, are going to say, that thing's too slow, give me something that's faster, right? But this is $100, and it gives you a lot of information. Just have a little patience. We're only talking about, you know, 10, 15 seconds. It's not like it's hours. It's just to a mechanic like me. We're like, oh, man, that thing's too slow. Give me something faster, right? But for 100 bucks, hey. <laughs> it gets you a lot. Now, it can also grab things, which is handy. We're going to look at alternator output duty, all right? So, here we go. We're showing what it is, and we'll turn the headlights on, and you'll see eventually it'll change. See how it's eventually changing? And then we'll turn it off, and you wait, 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 wait. Now it's going down. You see, there's a real time lag there. 
but that's because I've got everything chosen. Now, here's what we're going to do. You get everything chosen, it's a slow computer. It's going to take a while to activate and then feedback and give you the information. So there's too much time lag. So what we do is we get out of the graph and we'll unselect them all. So now none of them are selected and we will go back to the alternator test, alternator, and it's only showing the alternator and nothing else, right? You can see it's starting on the bottom there. Now we'll turn the headlights on. See how it went up almost immediately? Then we turn the headlights off. You can see it dropped pretty fast. If you want accurate readings, you only pick a few with a tiny machine like this. It'll do it fine, but you can't just have all of them running at once or there's going to be too much of a lag. The information's there, you just have to look at it one or two at a time instead of a fancy machine where you can do 10 things at a time. You know, let's face it, you're paying 100 bucks for this thing, right? <laughs> hey, but it gives you the information. You think you got a problem with the alternator? You can pinpoint it there, go to the alternator. You don't need to know everything else, fuel pressure and stuff, if you're testing the alternator. You can just set this up and look at that data. You got tons of data that you can look at, all kinds of data. Like I said, 285 different data parameters. Battery voltage and a battery module, too. We'll go all the way to the end since there's 285 of them. It goes on and look, it even shows you the automatic transmission oil temperature. But for a $100 scan tool to give you that kind of information, that's something. It's my big $5,000 machine does all that stuff, of course, but a $100 machine that gives you that kind of info? Yeah, it gives you the both sensors. There's two sensors on the automatic transmission. It gives you them both. It even lets you do EVAP tests if you don't pass the EVAP system and it has codes and you can't get your car inspected. Now, I'm not going to go through all 285 because we're not even halfway there yet and it takes too long for the lag, but you get what I'm talking about. Tons of data. We see it's got a lot of data, but look, it can actually do a lot of actuation tests. There, you can look at the EVAP system, activate the air pump heater. You can even control the variable valve timing. You can activate the lockup. Look at the stuff that you can do. It's insane. This out, you can even control and shut off fuel injectors if you're testing things. Look, we'll do the number one and we will turn it off. Now you can see it's missing out because it's shutting the number one off. When we turn it off, it goes back to normal running. If you want to learn about cars, <laughs> fix your own. You can spend a lot of time getting this data, learn how to use it, right? But it's there if you want to, and for a hundred bucks, I gotta say, it kind of blows me away. You can activate solenoids, you can even control the shift position. And since I made it run rough, hey, I'm clearing the memory. You just turn the key on with the engine off, and it'll clear the thing that we created. Hey, it's upgradable, right? You can change the setting, metric, imperial. You can do a basic OBD2 scan, but since this is a Toyota one, it does enhance scanning because you're paying for the Toyota, right? And then, like I say, it can record data. I haven't done any yet, but it also has a DTC library. You just put the code in, tells you what it is. As I said, since it doesn't have a battery, when you unplug it, it'll turn itself off because it doesn't have a battery in it. But hey, your vehicle already has a battery in it, so who cares? Less things to go wrong. It's just powered when you plug it in. I gotta say, for a hundred bucks, kind of amazing. And like you say, this is just your Toyotas and Lexuses. They got them for different cars. So whatever car you got, you wanna learn a little bit and get something for a hundred bucks. Hey, it's got some stuff that my $5,000 unit has. Yeah, it's slower, of course. You know, it doesn't have the memory. You can put a memory card in it, but it still won't work as fast as a big one. But it gives you an awful lot of information for 100 bucks. Now, the second tool I have is another tool that's about 100 bucks. It's called the Ampound 2. There was an Ampound 1, but Ampound 2 doesn't better. What it does is it can find parasitic drain and it can find electrical problems in your car easily without you having to be an electronic genius. Now, of course, I got thousand dollar meters and stuff for working on electric cars. You got to know which button means which. You got to put the right range in because let's say if you click it on the wrong range and you get a reading, you say, well, that's not bad. But then you find out that it's actually 10 times what that says because you clicked it on the wrong reading. This is all automated. There's nothing to screw up. Battery's drain, you got a parasitic drain, all right? Just go to the fuse box. I've already taken the top off. How simple this thing is to use, right? You turn it on, now it's turned on, right? And I'm gonna check a 10 amp fuse. So I will go to 10 amp, and it's a mini fuse. You can see you can change it to standard maxi, but these are mini fuses. So it's a 10 amp mini fuse, and we will put each end, positive and negative, doesn't matter which way you go, on the 10 amp fuse here, it beeps and you can see it says zero. That means there's no drain. When it says zero, it means there's no drain at all. So you know that circuit doesn't have a drain. Now, 
I had a video I made years ago on finding battery drain, and you have little charts you gotta look at and measure. Forget the charts. This thing does it all itself. Okay, these are the mini fuses. Then there's little, then there's regular size fuses and maxi fuses, and this is set up for them all. Mini standard and maxi, right? And all you do is push the button to set it, and that's all you gotta check. Now, this is a Toyota Matrix, so it doesn't have any problems, but we're gonna turn on the headlights. So now my LED headlights are on, and now that the headlights are on, we'll touch the probes at the top of the fuse here, and you can see it's got a 2.3 amp draw. That shows the power the headlights are using, that's why LED headlights are good, they use less power. That's not much power, 2.3 amps, right? So, if I didn't have the headlights turned on and there was a draw, you would know that circuit is what's draining the car. And it's very easy to test. You aren't taking the battery terminals off. You're not interrupting the system because if you take the battery terminals off, modern cars will start idling weird. Some systems have to be reset. You're not touching anything except checking the fuses. And as you can see, all the fuses have little metal dots, one on each side. That's how you can test them, see? All you have to do to test them is put one lead on one side and one lead on the other side. And in this case, you can hear it beep, it just tested. In this case, it went to zero. But not just for testing for a parasitic drain, you can test all the electronic devices with just a little bit of knowledge. You can test a fuel pump. What you do is you hook this up with the car running. So I'll put it over the fuel pump and see how many amps it's pulling. As you can see, it's pulling five amps. That's the power the fuel pump's drawing. If it draws too many amps, it means it's wearing out. But what does that mean to you? How do you know that? Well, you got a phone. 5.3 amps and 40 PSI. So five versus 5.3, that's negligible. It's almost exactly the same. So that shows, even though this fuel pump almost 17 years old, it still works perfectly fine. Now, if it would have been up there 8, 10 amps, you'd know the pump's starting to go out because it's draining too much power. But see how easy you can test things with this. All you have to do is push the value of the fuse, which it says on the fuse, 5 amp, 10 amps, right? And the type of fuse, which is either mini, micro, standard, or maxi. Most are mini, micro. You get confused, look that up and it'll show you the different sizes. It's all totally automated. And I do have to say, even with my super expensive equipment, this is so much faster and easier. And to top it all off, I don't have to look at any stupid charts like I would with my other meter. I have to transfer, okay, this is this many amps, this size fuse, what does that mean? It's all right here. I gotta say, for a hundred bucks, this amp pound two. I don't know what amp pound one was, I never had a one, but this two, I gotta say, it's a pretty good machine for finding electrical problems that anybody with a tiny amount of knowledge of electricity can use. And it also fits in this handy case with two zippers on it. Hey, I'm keeping this in my trunk. So now you know a couple of really good $100 tools that can save you a small fortune in car repairs with just a little bit of knowledge. Isn't that what it's about? We're all trying to help each other out here. You don't have to buy a $5,000 tool. You do if you're gonna reprogram stuff, but you're probably not gonna go that far. You wanna do some electrical troubleshooting or check engine light checks. Hey, these $100 tools give you a leg up. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.